everyone, uh, I guess we're doing this in the rain. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at this 2022 Hyundai Kona N. Uh, the Kona is a subcompact, I call it a hatchback, Hyundai tries to call it an SUV. But either way, it's a subcompact hatchback or SUV from Hyundai. Uh, the Kona N is new for the 2022 model year and it's essentially a hot hatchback version of the Kona. Uh, so this thing has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, it puts out 276 horsepower and 289 pounds-feet of torque. Uh, there is a button on the steering wheel that for 20 seconds will bump that horsepower figure up to uh, 286, so 10 horsepower boost for 20 seconds. Uh, the Kona N comes exclusively with front-wheel drive, which again points to it being really a hatchback more than an SUV, and it uses an eight-speed uh, dual-clutch automatic transmission. Uh, Hyundai has two other N models in its lineup that use a similar formula. You've got the Elantra N and then the Veloster N, which is being discontinued after the 2022 model year. Uh, both of those vehicles can be optioned, or at least maybe maybe a better way to put it is come standard with a six-speed manual and can be optioned with the dual clutch, the eight-speed dual clutch automatic. Uh, but the Kona N, where it differs is it comes exclusively with the dual clutch automatic. But either way, let's do a little tour of the Kona N here and then take it out for a drive. So styling here is maybe a bit polarizing, you be the judge, but uh, this is what happens when you start with a subcompact hatchback and then try to make it look like an SUV by adding a bunch of body cladding. So on the regular Kona, this is all unpainted plastic around the wheel arches here and then turn it into a performance model, which I guess necessitates painting that cladding. Uh, kind of makes for a, a weird look here, but some people like weird, and I'm certainly not too offended by it. The Kona does get a facelift for 2022, so that introduces pretty much an entirely new front end. Uh, the Kona N has these vents here, at least they look like vents, they don't they don't appear to be functional, which is a little bit disappointing. But uh, on the regular facelifted Kona, the Hyundai emblem is right here. On the Kona N, you get these vents, and then the Hyundai emblem moves down to the grille here. Then, of course, there's an N emblem there. These, well, actually, these are the headlights. These are the turn signals. And then there are red accents all around the bottom of the vehicle. Uh, you get 19-inch wheels, and they are wrapped in Pirelli P0 summer performance tires. So uh, that's gonna be interesting in this rain here, but summer tires are more about temperature than, than anything else. Moving down the side, like I said, red on the rocker panels, and there's an N emblem at the end of them there. Move around back, get a little three quarter view. Got a lot of layers around back here. Once again, tail light arrangement is certainly unique. Up top, no sunroof. Uh, that's something that companies will often do on performance models. They'll argue that it's to save weight and lower the center of gravity. I argue that it's to add in more profit margin, but either way, no sunroof on the Kona N. You do get this big black wing here, and you can see there's like, you get, there's spaces in it for, for air to go. So complicated wing. This is kind of fun. Triangular brake light up top there. Take a look at the badges. So you've got Kona, the Hyundai emblem, and then an N badge way down there. So they don't they don't line up. Uh, big, big exhaust tips, and they do sound pretty neat. And then there's this kind of diffuser design trim piece in between them there. Take a look at the cargo area. So this is a subcompact hatchback. This is a tire mobility kit, which leads me to assume there's no spare tire. Yep, no spare tire in the Kona N. Uh, Hyundai will argue that that's once again for weight savings. I will once again argue that that's for cost savings. It's probably a little bit of both, but either way, there is a kind of a funky tray here underneath the cargo floor and then uh, nothing else down there. I guess you could you could employ that as a little storage area. Anyway, uh, not much else to see back here. There is a cargo cover. No uh, ports or lights or anything like that. Pretty, pretty basic cargo area. Here's the key. It's a pretty basic key. You got lock, unlock, press and hold for remote start, and then press and hold for panic. Uh, one thing that's different about the Kona N key is it has an N emblem on it there in addition to the Hyundai emblem. Okay, let's take a look at the window sticker. 
You can see this is a 2022 Hyundai Kona N. The exterior color is Sonic Blue. Uh, as equipped, this one comes in at $35,445 when you factor in a $1,245 destination fee. And there are really no options on the Kona N. So uh, that's that's about what you're gonna pay. The only, the only choice you have to make is color. Uh, Fuel economy comes in at 20 city, 27 highway, and 23 combined, according to the EPA. Uh, that's really not great for a subcompact hatchback or SUV, whatever you want to call it. But uh, when you factor in that this has 276 horsepower, 289 pounds-feet of torque, um, I, I guess that starts to feel reasonable, but uh, still feels like we could do better. And, and as a matter of fact, I know the Elantra uh, has better, better figures here, the Elantra N. Either way though, let's go ahead and turn it on. So as we can see, uh, digital gauge cluster, I believe this measures 10.3 inches. And then the infotainment screen here uh, measures, I believe at 10.25 inches, but uh, it's pretty wide. Uh, Hyundai's infotainment system is good. I like it a lot, kind of functions like your phone. So pretty intuitive, pretty easy to navigate. Same goes with this digital gauge cluster here. Uh, you can cycle through a few different drive modes, which brings up some different views. So we'll go to eco, brings up a subtler view. There's normal, more of a traditional view. Sport, things get a little bit more energetic. And then snow mode looks a lot like normal mode. Uh, if you twist the drive mode button all the way to the right and hold it, you go into N mode. That's the Kona N's most aggressive mode. Uh, this is pretty much set up for track use here, which this vehicle would be a lot of fun on the track. So there's your tachometer, uh, oil temperature, engine temperature. It looks like an accelerometer or a G-force meter right there got fuel then you've got uh, another temperature gauge there uh, over on the dashboard pretty straightforward controls because again this is a subcompact hatchback at heart so HVAC's all pretty easy to use single zone uh, does not look like it's automatic so pretty basic HVAC system let's go back into normal mode. This thing gets pretty loud in end mode um, over here you can turn on and off stability control that's once again, in a performance car, that's fun to be able to do. Heated seats, uh, something I don't like is Hyundai has held out uh, when it comes to offering USB-C in its vehicles. So you just get two USB-A ports, uh, then a 12 volt outlet here, and then you do get a wireless charging pad. That's right there. Moving back, not much else to see. There is a mechanical parking brake, which we love in a performance car. Uh, two cup holders, and then in the center console here, really not much going on. It's even smaller than it looks uh, from the outside because there's a hump right here, I assume, for the parking brake. But uh, yeah, not, not the most useful center console box. As far as materials go, again, we're starting with a really inexpensive mainstream subcompact hatchback here so the door panels are a hard plastic you get down here and it's kind of soft touch but again not not really nice um, the switches feel pretty good only the front only the front windows are one touch up and down but again this is this is just uh, kind of shiny plastic there's some padding right here uh, top of the dashboard it's kind of a nice eh, it, it's hard plastic and then something I noticed unfortunately Appears that this air vent is is broken, um, which it's a bummer that it's broken, but it's kind of fun to play with now. And you've got Hyundai's excellent bumper-to-bumper uh, -bumper new car warranty that would cover this thing for five years and 60,000 miles, um, which if something like this happens to one of these that you own, you just take it to the dealership and they fix it. We should touch on the steering wheel because there are a lot of N specific things going on here. Uh, so first of all, you've got paddle shifters and I do like these paddle shifters. They're, they're pretty big, so bottom top and they do have a nice range of motion uh, the same can't be said for for all vehicles with paddle shifters but there's your upshift and your downshift is over here uh, this red button here is really fun it has ngs on it which hyundai brands n grin shift uh, it kind of plays into the way that in video games like mario kart you've got a turbo boost button so under the right conditions you can push this button See, it's a conditions not met currently, but when you're moving at the right speed, you can push this button and the vehicle will for 20 seconds go into its most aggressive drive mode and give you that uh, 10 horsepower bump. So for 20 seconds, you're in what is basically end mode 
and you're working with 286 horsepower rather than just 276. So that's pretty fun. Turns off after 20 seconds, and then there's like a 20 or 30 second cooldown period until you can use it again. Uh, these buttons are, are interesting. They're both configurable. They feel kind of nice. They're like a pearly pale blue. That's that's like the N color. But when you push one, or well, rather, we should go we should go to setup. Setup and then press button and that'll show us. So you got the left end button on the steering wheel and then the right end button on the steering wheel. And these are all the different ways you can configure uh, that button. So right now you can see the left button is configured to cycle through the different drive modes. Just like here, you can cycle between like eco, normal, sport and snow. And then the right button is set to bring you into the custom two drive setting. I think this is really smart though. You can set it so that it cycles between N and custom two or N and custom one. I like that a lot. Um, I could see someone who wants to take this vehicle to the track, uh, really fine tuning how they set these buttons up here uh, to, to, to make for the most exciting track experience. I think that covers the front seating area. Uh, let's go check out the back real quick. Going to N mode though. Does sound pretty good. I was wondering if uh, the noise was was more so just augmented into the cabin through the speakers, if it was a fake noise, but but nope. Sounds sounds pretty good. Okay, so uh, we weren't expecting much back here and you don't get much, uh, not a lot of room. Again, subcompact hatchback SUV, whatever you wanna call it, it's a subcompact car. And uh, yeah, I don't have much knee room. I would not be very comfortable back here. I'm about 5'11". That's where I have the seat when I'm driving. And uh, well, you can see I don't have much knee room at all. Uh, rear door panels, just like the fronts, don't feel that great. But uh, we're not expecting them to spend in that area on a vehicle like this. You get cup holders in the fold down armrest, overhead grab handles, a light, and then once again, just a USB-A port on the back of the console there. There is a little storage net on the back of the passenger seat. Nothing on the back of the driver's seat. Okay, driving this 2022 Hyundai Kona N. So we are in our normal drive mode now. We'll do a little acceleration pull uh, in the normal mode, and then we'll go into end mode so they can see the differences there. Uh, it is raining, so keep that in mind. So there's 50, there's about, there's 60. Uh, zero to 60 is about five and a half to five seconds. I've seen it clocked at like four point. 4.9 as well so so that's cool uh, there is a little bit of torque steer a little bit of wheel hop which is honestly hard to accept here in 2022 it seems like the technology exists to engineer that out i'm not sure why hyundai hasn't done that but uh either way this is a powerful vehicle pretty hardcore honestly let's go ahead and go into end mode so you can see things got a little louder you can hear things got a little louder Exhaust does sound really nice um, if you're looking for something like that. And, okay, so green light. Wheel spin because it's wet. There's the grin shift button. Woo! Okay, yeah. So the car is definitely quick <laughs> and you can feel it tense up when you press that grin shift button. It stays on for 20 seconds. So we've got nine seconds of, of that insanity left if we want to use it. Um, you can hear the car aggressively downshifting. It's a cool function. Um, Porsche offers something like this. I think Mercedes-Benz offers something like this. So it's fun to see this tech make its way to a more... It's fun to see that tech or that feature make its way to a more mainstream vehicle. I really wish it wasn't wet outside right now. We're getting a lot of wheel spin from these summer tires. So when you want to drive this car hard, it's fun to drive. Um, 
when you want to just go for a leisurely stroll, maybe a commute or running some errands, you don't really want to be doing hard acceleration pulls at every red light. Uh, the car is kind of rough. I've driven a lot of vehicles in this segment. I like this segment. I think I'm the target demographic for this segment. And um, some competitors are a little bit easier to live with day to day. Um, Volkswagen comes to mind. I'm not driven the new WRX, I'm not driven the new Civic Si, but um, I know that some vehicles in this segment are a little bit easier day to day. This vehicle feels um, pretty intense, especially when you go into end mode. That said, sport mode is a nicer balance, but uh, there's that electronic component to the suspension that uh, makes it feel pretty rough, even in sport mode. This street here isn't really nice. There's a lot of like tar on it and some construction's been done and you can feel every little bump. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably do most of my driving in normal mode. But the nice thing is you've got this button, this NGS button that you can push if you want to go into end mode essentially for say 20 seconds and then go back to your normal driving mode. So that's probably what I would do most of the time. I'd leave it in normal mode and press the NGS button when I when I wanted to have some fun for 20 seconds and then go back to driving in normal mode. Yeah, it's a really aggressive drive mode. And you can press the button again to cancel it if you don't want to be in, in that mode for the full 20 seconds. But uh, we're going over our speed bumps there. Um, Hyundai calls this an SUV. It's not even all wheel drive. So I'm gonna go with hatchback. And uh, for that reason, we're, we're not going too fast over these speed bumps here because SUV or hatchback, whatever you want to call it, uh, the car doesn't have a lot of ground clearance. Handling feels pretty good. Maybe not as twitchy, not quite as fun as something like a GTI. I've, again, recently reviewed a Toyota GR86. That was a little bit more fun to zip around in. Backup camera is definitely a good thing. Hyundai's backup cameras are some of the best in the business. Kind of a backup camera snob and uh, this one's this one's pretty good color's good it's not distorted uh the edges of the feed aren't blown out there's no fisheye effect this is one of the best backup cameras in the business for, for whatever that's worth okay so that is our look at the 2022 hyundai kona n um it's fun that cars like this still exist uh this has always been a fun segment this kind of hot hatchback or performance, small, affordable performance, compact car segment. Uh, this car has a lot going for it. There's a lot of like branded tech here. There's there's N Green Shift. There's the whole N brand. There's a lot of other like acronyms that they've come up with uh, to market certain elements of this vehicle that involve performance and the transmission and the suspension and the different buttons and drive modes. So that's kind of fun. Um, 276 horsepower, 286 when you press this button, 289 pounds for your torque. That's quite a lot. Uh, the eight speed dual clutch automatic is, is pretty good. Shifts quickly. Um, I would love it if this car were all wheel drive, it doesn't really differentiate itself from the other options in the Hyundai N lineup. Uh, but I have to think that all wheel drive would have added too much cost to the point where they would have had to charge more for this vehicle. And uh, like I said, about $35,000, $36,000 is what you'll pay for one of these. No options. Um, that's right in line with the Veloster N, which is going away for 2023. It's right in line with the Elantra N, which uses most of the same tech from this vehicle. It's just a little bit bigger, but you don't get the benefit of the hatchback. Um, so yeah, definitely an interesting time for Hyundai. One thing I will say, I haven't quite connected with this vehicle like I have some other affordable performance compact cars that I've reviewed and driven. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that this vehicle is, is tilted pretty hard toward the aggressive, which means it's maybe not as pleasant or charming to drive around town as something like a Volkswagen GTI, which makes a little bit less power. They, they, they trade, when it comes to the GTI, they trade a little bit of this intensity for some more day-to-day -day livability, for a little bit more maturity. And, and I think this is a personal thing, but I, I probably would prefer something like that GTI that's a little bit more balanced relative to the Kona N here, which is, is kind of all intensity all the time, uh, at least when you've got it in its other drive modes. But uh, still, it's a fun vehicle to drive. I'm glad that cars like this are still around. I'm glad that someone's building a subcompact car with 276, 286 
horsepower. That's really fun. There's really not anything else uh, this small on the market. Overall, this is a really quirky, unique vehicle. Call it a hatchback or SUV. It's a small car with slightly higher than normal ride height uh, that it also makes 276 horsepower and uh, has a performance exhaust and launch control and like a turbo button basically on the steering wheel. So, so that's pretty fun. Anyway, I think I've rambled long enough. That about sums up the Kona N. Uh, this is certainly a fun and unique vehicle. Thank you for watching.